21-year-old is Kwasi Skeen Peters. We also know that he was wanted by police for his alleged involvement in a double homicide. Let me promote my nigga one time. Head up. Real spiller. Yeah, look at my spiller. Look at my right hand curl right here, actually. Best friend, you know. The quasi senior testified his son was in and out of jail from the age of 13. 21 year old quasi skiing Peters. And they dissed you, idiot team. You're up to cousin. What are you dealing with? Huh? Your baba. The abs. Baba. You were skiing. Did you catch me? Did you catch me? Baba. It's not you, cousin. Baba. Kwasi Skeen Peters, a.k.a. Wasi, is a Toronto rap artist. He was raised by the infamous Northside Jane and Finch neighborhood of Driftwood, a.k.a. The Woods. The Woods has been the scene of many gang-related shootings over the past two decades, and Toronto police reported that it has long been a territory claimed by the Crips. Driftwood have ongoing tensions with communities on the south side of Jane and Finch called the Grassways and the Lane, both of which have claimed blood. Although The Woods is home to some of the most talented artists in Toronto, from the legendary Robin Banks. I'm from, then you know my life been hard, but through the bullshit I still find a way to come out of star. To the young and lyrical Pressa. Lost a murder trial, you should have pled out. Like Pressa said, I want the Lambo in the match, and she drifting my DM so I know she back. The notable neighborhood has also birthed some of Toronto's biggest demons. But last summer, something happened to Burns too that made him reevaluate. His half-brother was running on this footbridge when he was shot dead. Andre Burnett was once one of Toronto's most wanted criminals. On the afternoon his enemies finally caught up with him, Burns was close enough to hear the gunshots. I don't know, man. I, I felt kind of like up in a way still. Like, I don't even know what, how to describe it. Like, it was rage, anger, like... I don't know, sadness, whatever, all mixed into one. It was also the realization that what happened to his brother could just as easily have happened to him. Andre Burnett was a Driftwood OG with a very violent history. At the age of 23, he had racked up a serious criminal record, including firearms charges, as well as two attempted murder charges against two Toronto police officers. Andre spent 22 months in prison for the two attempted murders before the case was thrown out due to an inaccurate report made by one of the officers. On September 10th, 2005, just hours after being released, Andre was walking along Driftwood's iconic bridge when he was confronted by a man. Residents at the scene, including his half-brother Andrew, reported hearing loud yelling and a heated argument outside before hearing a My best friend Wasi, he seen somebody like, like, basically there's a guy, he got shot on the, the, on our neighborhood, like, plaza, and then the guy ran, it's in the news too, it's, um, the guy ran to, like, our bridge, and my best friend, he, he seen the guy die, he's dead on the bridge, you know, and he's just a little kid, like, he was probably just like, I don't know, like 10 or 11, right? So, he was just like two years older than me at this time, so, he walked and he's like, fuck, you know, like, that's a lot for a kid to see him, like, a guy dead on the floor, you know? And then, that guy, he was never, he, even my teacher said, like, Quasi would never be the same after that. Wasi was indeed never the same after finding Andre's body. At the age of 13, just two years after the traumatic incident, Wasi was charged and convicted of a gang assault on a 13-year-old girl with two other teens. Three years after that, he was sent to the controversial Roy McMurtry Youth Center in Brampton as part of his punishment. Youth researchers Chris Williams, Devin Jones, and Roseanne Bailey were at the facility at the time and they took the opportunity to interview Wasi. In their report, Wasi was quoted saying, Sir, if that judge thought I was a monster as he described us at sentencing, the world is going to see a monster when I get out of this hell hole. This place made me a monster. Every day I am literally fighting for my life. He then went on further repeating, the world is going to see a monster. 
Since then, Wasi spent the rest of his teenage years in and out of juvenile detention. The authors also took the opportunity to interview Wasi's mother, who told them that her son's re-arrest and incarceration stemmed from the challenges he encountered in the course of attempting to register in school and his inability to access reflective services. According to Williams, Jones, and Bailey, by the time Wasi was 16, he would be charged in the December 2011 Project Marvel raids, in which police forces across Canada simultaneously executed search warrants targeting the Driftwood Crips. This resulted in more than 60 arrests, some of them including Pressa, YG, Bundog, and more. Attempted murder, prostitution. We have breaking news this hour on a cross-Canada crackdown on gang crime. Raids are underway in cities from Toronto all the way out to Vancouver. In the middle of the night, a 94-year-old great-grandmother among those arrested in a series of police raids. Handguns automatic rifles, and more than $100,000 in cash. Items seized during yesterday's cross-country crackdown. It was many of those arrested, some as young as 14, facing charges that include attempted murder. They appeared in court today, one by one, and many have already been released. If your children have guns, moms, look in their rooms, check. You might have a killer on the dinner table. Wasi was granted bail on the Project Marvel charges, but he was arrested again a few months after his 18th birthday and charged with a weapons offense. He was released on bail the next year. By the time Wasi entered his 20s, his troubles only intensified. We're continuing to follow breaking news from the Queen and Dover Court area. For the very latest, we go live to the scene and CP24's Arda Zakarian, who has no new details for us. Arda. That's right. Toronto Paramedic Services confirms to us now that two people are pronounced dead on the scene here. Well, Ken, the double shooting happened here around 7 o'clock in the morning at this trendy new condo building near Queen and Dover Court. As you mentioned, police have now released the names of the victims. The victims were both 26 years old and from Toronto. Their names are Abduel Abdullahi and Mohammed Abduel Deary. Police say they were shot to death. On the Sunday, June 28th. 2015. Known dicks and bloods, Mohammed Deary aka Cam and Abduwali Abdullahi aka Bevy were executed after a three day long party at a downtown Toronto condo. Cam was executed by the two gunmen in the kitchen. Then one of the gunmen immediately went into the bedroom and shot Bevy as he slept. Two other men and three women were at the apartment before the shootings. The men had apparently just left the apartment and were in the corridor outside at the time of the shootings, while the women were still in the apartment, but had gone out on the balcony to smoke. After the shooting, one of the men took Cam's chain off his neck and his $250,000 Rolex watch. They then left the scene. With no cooperating witnesses and a lack of evidence, investigators assumed this would lead to a cold case. However, in just two weeks, they had a major break. Toronto police would ask the public in identifying two men caught on CCTV celebrating the slayings just an hour later. The two men were Wasi and his childhood friend, Kamal Hassan. The footage appears to show Kamal reenacting the incident and Wasi wearing the chain Cam was robbed of. The original video was removed, but has since been re-uploaded and is sitting at almost 400,000 views. You heard that right. A re-uploaded video of Wasi and his homie celebrating a drill is sitting at almost 400,000 views. Crazy stuff. That same day, Toronto police would put out a Canada-wide warrant for Wasi while Kamal surrendered shortly after the announcement. Two weeks after the warrant was issued for Wasi, Toronto police managed to track him at Trist nightclub in downtown Toronto. However, during that weekend the streets were especially busy since it was Carabana weekend. Constable Reed was conducting surveillance on Wasi during this time and he spotted him along with several men wearing shirts with up top written on the chest. Up top is another term for Northside Jane and Finch. According to Constable Reed, he observed Wasi have an argument with the bouncer, then saw him walk to a Ford Focus with other individuals. He then passed a gun to the passenger of the vehicle and hopped into the driver's seat. 
Constables Riel, Lambie, and Dunn were on the Tavis team that night. Tavis is a kind of roving police team that is deployed to violent areas. They were in uniform and on bicycles this specific day. Just after 2 a.m., they were called to assist the Toronto Police Intelligence Unit with taking down Wasi. They waited in the alley behind Trist until the takedown was called. When they got the green light, the three officers ran from the alley towards the Ford Focus he was sitting in. Constable Riel saw two people in the front of the car. He pointed his gun at them and yelled words to the effect of police, hands up, don't move. He then saw a muzzle flash and heard bullets snapping. He realized that someone was shooting at him through the front window of the Ford Focus. He returned fire. that 21-year-old is Kwasi Skeen Peters. Shortly after Wasi's death, community members rallied against the officers who shot at him, claiming negligence on their part. Many believe they jumped the gun by calling in a takedown on Wasi as it was in a public area, with heavy civilian presence which was further exacerbated due to it being Carabana weekend. The complaints were taken to the director of the Special Investigations Unit, who would clear the two officers and claimed they were acting in self-defense and were legally justified in shooting Wasi. Fast forward four years, Kamal, Wasi's childhood friend and co-defendant, would stand trial alone for the double homicide. Kamal didn't hesitate to tell the judge everything, in fact he was eager. He revealed that he was terrified of Wasi. Kamal was quoted saying, I was scared, I didn't know what his next move was. Wasi was rocking back and forth after the murders, shouting excitedly, I'm two up. Do you know what he meant? The prosecutor asked. One up means I killed a person. Two up means I killed two people. That's what people usually say when they kill people. It's like a score. How did that make you feel? The prosecutor replied. This guy's crazy. I'm hoping I'm not the next guy he kills. Kamal also agreed prosecutors got it right when they said that elevator surveillance cameras recorded him reenacting the two murders about an hour after they happened. Basically, I'm glorifying what he did, Kamal said, narrating the footage shown on several monitors. After spending a total of two years in pretrial custody, Kamal was eventually found not guilty and cleared of all charges. <laughs> 